Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about B for Artists. B for Artists 2.0 was just released so we're going to take a look at it. Now the entire idea behind B for Artists is it's basically a facelift for Blender. It goes beyond just, you know, prettying up the user interface. It also goes into prettying up and making the documentation board better and more accessible. And basically you can think about it this way. Blender is designed and aims at stuff at pros. B for Artists is aimed at artists for indies, people trying to pick it up and trying to make it much more usable. Now I first covered this guy uh, back in 2017 and back then it made a ton more sense if you if I can be um, at least throw my opinion in there because what B4 Artist did was made Blender more accessible to the masses and I think you could argue that the user interface used to be a little we'll go with polarizing. The way things were done back then uh, weren't the greatest. The thing is, since this was released, since B4 Artist 1.0, well Blender 2.0, uh, sorry 2.8 Oh, uh, and beyond were all released and a big part of 2.80 was updating and fixing the user interface. Coincidentally, if you want to see what B for Artist 1.0 did, I did a full video about this, kind of show you some of the changes they made. But basically, they just made Blend for Artists, oh, sorry, uh, Blender itself more approachable for artists. And if, for the most part, I would actually agree that they succeeded. So again, we're here talking about B for Artists because B for Artists 2.0 was just released. You can go over to their website. Uh, it's available at bforartist.de. I will, of course, have this in the link news down below. And you will see um, where they've gone with it. There's there's details on uh, B for Artists 2 Final. Now, the Final sounds scary, meaning that this might be the final version they ever do. And I guess that's a possibility to do the fact that Blender got a lot better uh, with the 2.8 release from the user interface perspective, but they're actually saying that they're done with the code aspects of it, and now they're focusing on their documentation. And documentation is actually a big part of it. The nice thing with them is they've actually created uh, their move their menus all into PDF forms. You can grab one giant PDF with all of the manual in it, or you can grab it chapter by chapter. And these chapters break things down in a much more friendly way. You get walkthroughs of what everything is. You get full screenshots. You get up to date and kind of a lift. If you go through Blender's help right now and you want to see what a menu item does, for example, it can be a little a little perplexing, I guess you could say. So all the documentation is available here, but that is what they are working on next. So the documentation part of Blend for Artists or B for Artists is still a work in progress, but it is a noble effort for them just trying to basically make Blender both from a UI perspective and a documentation perspective easier and more approachable. So let's head on in. So this here is B for Artist. Just for some comparison, B for Artist, just good old fashioned B. So the way it used to work is this would be a much more profound change, but now it's it's a lot mine, more minor. This is more like tweaks. And keep in mind, this is a fork of Blender. So they're going to, you know, trend behind a little bit, but they've done some stuff here that really makes a lot of sense. And some things that are going to be a little polarizing. The one thing you're going to find is Blender itself is very gray. They, they've got uh, monochrome icons everywhere. You've got walls of text everywhere. So let's head on over to B for Artist. Here you can see there is a bit more color. There's also a bit less noise. You're going to notice up here, we've stripped down the number of um, workspaces by default, the workspace templates here. And I agree with this move. Uh, I think that there are frankly too many under the default blender. Of course, this is a customization thing. You can do this yourself, but this is aimed at someone who just started using uh, B for Artist. On top of that, we've also got some pretty major changes to the key mapping. So You'll notice the menus have been stripped out. We'll get back to that in a second. But now here I am in B for Artist and I'm holding down my right mouse button and I am orbiting. It's like, whoa, wait, wait a minute. That's kind of like what you would expect in um, most 3D applications in uh, Blender. Right mouse button is, well, let's just say it's a contentious issue. Sometimes it is select. Uh, sometimes it is bring up a menu. In B for Artists, it view it uh, orbits the screen. Now, the cool thing about this approach and what they've done here is they've made all navigation, everything you need to do, the common stuff, is all just there in your mouse. So if you need to work, and, and this I absolutely love for one reason is that I can now go into my surface and use it without the keyboard attached. And this is an area where um, Blender's kind of gotten better, especially with their, their, giz their gizmo up here, but this approach does allow me to basically just come in and start working. Now, the downside here is there's a couple things. Like, first off, well, what happens to right click? Well, right click, if you go to a traditional thing, it's still right click. So if you go over a menu, you still get right click menus. However, if you want to right click on the uh, view menu right here, 
you can double right click to get the option up. So single right click and hold is orbit or uh, rotate. Double right click brings up the menu. Good compromise in my opinion, and I actually kind of like that approach. Uh, they, but at the same time, they have also done the key map changes. So if I go up here and I create something um, something new, I just noticed that my uh, my menu bar was scrolled off the screen for some reason. This is actually another one of the things that they have done. So I just created this new cube here. We can actually do that via uh, these menu keys up here now. That's a big part of it. We'll come back to that in a second. But here we've created the new key. And normally what you would do in Blender to move something is hit G. And now G is G for grab, by the way. And you're going to get so used to having that as your hot key. In this particular case, um, it's not anymore. Now it is W. Now if you're not familiar with um, the way that most 3D applications work basically since Autodesk's Maya came out. Uh, w is the standard for uh, movement. And why is W any better than G? Well, the industry has basically standardized on the idea of the QWERTY key. So you've got Q is for select, W is for move, E is for rotate, R, kind of confusingly, is for scaling, um, T is for I forget what T is for. I don't think T is really used for anything. In this case, it's used for hiding and showing the tool menu, just like normal Blender. Uh, but instead of having the like, grab, scale, and rotate as G, S, and R, you instead have this line of keys that all go in order. And the reason why that's kind of relevant is if you come in here from any kind of other CG application, it will be immediately comfortable. Now, the thing is, some people aren't going to like this, obviously. And if you want to stick with your normal key mappings, that is an option to you. Come in here to um, preferences, key map. You're going to notice you can switch out from ben Blend for Artist over to uh, Blender Standard, or you can go to uh, Industry Compatible, which is still going to give you the QWERTY key moves, by the way. So they've created their own set of key maps, and it is fully documented, and you're going to probably find they're more intuitive. Are they better than Blender's? Well, Blender's key maps are great once you've memorized them all, and you start realizing some of the things you could do, like GG, X, and then enter a number in to scale along that, or sort of move along that axis, and so on. But this is definitely more approachable. Now, the nice thing, again, with key mapping is you can definitely turn it off. Now, another thing you're probably noticing here is we've got toolbars now. So I'm going to just go up here, hit W. Let's move this guy out of the way. So let's say I want to make something. Boom. I just made it. Made it. Made it. Made it. Made it. So you got these toolbars that have... Um, all, all of these prefabs built into it. And on top of that, these are context sensitive. So if we switch out to a different mode, you get a different set of um, objects up there or, or options up there. You'll notice those all kind of went away. At the same time, you can also come up here and define your own things that you want to put up here. So if you use uh, curves a lot, you can, or say metaballs, if, if anybody's still using metaballs, you can bring in a metaball menu. You're also probably noticing something different here is we have color. So there is a lot more contrast in the user interface between B for Artist and Blender. It's a small point, sure, uh, but it does make things, uh, you know, a little bit easier on the eyes. So the whole monochrome approach that they've done with Blender looks really good, but it also can be a little, little things get lost in it, I guess is how you could say that. Now, so we've got a ton of icons all throughout here. Another major thing that they've done, and this is one of those things that Blender does a lot of, is you would find a menu option here, you'd find a menu option here, you'd find the right-click menu, which they basically got rid of. Uh, they've gone ahead and streamlined the menu. So the menus are here and only, so if it's here, it's only in one spot. So you don't have seven or eight different ways to find something in here. They've streamlined the menus. If it's available in the toolbox, it's not in here. So you don't have these duplicates going on. Um, it does really kind of cut down on the noise. You'll also notice in menus, you now have icons on all of the options here. Another thing they've done, this one's kind of minor, but these things in Blender, you would see, here, let's head on back over here for a second. If I open up the toolbar, they are all right aligned. B for, uh, B for artists finds it a lot easier to see it on a left align. And I, I do agree with that change as well, to be honest. Now, another really cool thing that they've done is they've made it so... Uh, let me go ahead and add something in here. So actually, hold on one second. Okay, snap forward a bit. Here you can see I now have a text object here. And previously, this feature, these features and functionality, so text, this move cursor, all of these commands here, these things like control left, arrow right, arrow left, and so on, these were all... Um, hotkey only. So there was actually no menu item for those things. Now, it's not something you're going to do very often, uh, but having to find a text or a hotkey to specifically handle something like that can get a little frustrating. The entire idea of what they did here is basically made it so that anything that had a hotkey 
also has a menu item. So for everything, every action you can do in Blender, so there now is only one menu option for each thing, but there is also a menu option for everything. So there are no longer any things that are completely hotkey only in the Blender usability, which is also, again, a nice improvement. On the same theme, here I am, I've got my camera right now selected. I'm gonna switch over here into camera mode and there's a new icon they added right up here and I love this. This is just basically lock camera to view and you can toggle it on and off and on and off. Now this is something I do absolutely constantly when I'm working in Blender. Right now you basically have to come over here. Oh, I'm still in text mode. All right, let's go back here, object mode. You have to go over here to this menu over here, go to, I always forget which one it is. Item, no, I see camera selected. Go over here, tool, no, view. Yeah, it kind, of, kind of showing you exactly what I mean. You have to go over here, go into this menu, go to view and say lock camera to view. Now there is a quick icon always available for you. And that what this does is basically it, it frames in the view as you're selecting. So if I turn that off, I can move the viewport around. So if you're positioning or framing a camera in, that's an invaluable tool. And it's nice to have this quick easy icon up here. Now this is getting into some pretty minor stuff, but it's, it's usability things. And it's the stuff that are missing for a, a newbie coming into Blender. And again, that is one of B for artists real big design focuses. They wanted to get it so that they're aiming at the indie or at the, the new to Blender or the artist that doesn't want to, you know, spend however much time reading through the manual to get their stuff up and going. And I think that's kind of about it. Now, what I'm going to say right straight out is this seems a lot more minor compared to uh, what they did in the past. And I agree with that. And I think Blend for Artists agrees with that. If you watch the release notes, they were kind of talking, they actually kind of thought about, nah, we could probably discontinue this project because Blender 2.8x got so much better. But then they found little things that they did find annoying. And to be honest, for the most part, I like their changes. I, I personally, I find these icons, which again, I appreciate. So you got front, top, so on and so forth. I find the icons hideous and the color choice is bad. And really this is the only one that stands out to me because across the board, I do like the icons. I do like to see icons when I look at menus here, especially when you get into uh, some of the more, you know, complicated menus or, or full menus when you start going in and um, so like when you drop down something like this, this stands out to me a whole lot better than just a gray wall of text. So once you get kind of used to the colors and hunting for colors, something your eye is really good at is picking out a color. And when you've got just stark gray contrast, it looks good. But from a uh, actual usability perspective, these little improvements, these icons, this use of color, the splash of color, the increased contrast, there is definitely value there. Now, in terms of changing the key maps in Blender, that is an argument older than time itself. But I would argue there is definitely a market for what Blend for Artists is doing, especially when you also look, once again, we head on back over to their website, the, the, the documentation and making the documentation. So this documentation is going to be written to use their key sets and their user interface and so on. But it is also a very beginner friendly way of learning Blender. So you could almost even come in and use Blend for Artists to get started and then migrate over. So again, is Blend for Artists as valuable as it was before Blender 2.8 was released? No, and that's a good thing because Blender 2.8 got a lot more usable for the masses, but they still does offer improvements that I can honestly see. And I would highly recommend if you tried out Blender, but there's certain things it does that drive you nuts. Give Blend for Artists a shot because I think in some ways that's why it was created. It is trying to solve those usability issues that not everybody has. And I will agree with that fully. Some people think that Blender is perfect as it is. Um, some people thought it was perfect as 2.7x branch. I honestly think, uh, I think they got 99% of my issues with 2.8x generally. Uh, so I don't think I would use this personally, but I've already been through the learning curve. So I can understand how uh, to other people, especially if you're coming from another platform and you want that consistent uh, approach and you know things like right click orbit I like that I, I might actually adopt that in my own blender approach and I'd also like the idea that double right click brings up the menu so there there are things here that I like I'm kind of curious to hear what you have to say do you think that with blender 2.80 being so much better there isn't really need for b for artists anymore or from what you saw of the improvements in b for artists 2.0 and I use improvements in air quote because of course a lot of this is going to be opinion does this look like a better way of doing things do you like the streamlining of menu the higher contrast the use of colors the use of icons that kind of stuff or are you going to stick with blender as it stands let me know comments down below and i will talk to you all later goodbye